In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can reach your goals by showing you my plan to reach mine. What's going on guys, Armando Gong here. Now, if you have not watched my last video on how you can reach your goals, check it up out over here. But I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna reach mine with this video. Now, the TLDR version of that video is I have five steps to reaching my goals. First step being to reflect, second step to be goal setting, third step is to reverse engineer, fourth step is to schedule, and the fifth step is to actually act on them. Now I got three areas of my life where I'm setting some goals that I'm trying to reach this year. The first being financial, the second being personal fitness, and the third being in my education. For my financial goals, I've always been wanting to just reach financial independence, meaning that I am not directly trading time for money, so that I don't always have to be working at a job from nine to five and instead setting my own schedule, being able to make money outside of just straight working and being able to just do what I want whenever I want. Now, I'll go through my five steps here, starting with reflecting. And in 2020, I did quite a lot of things to help me start on this journey. I established my LLC. I actually started working as a personal trainer just to get some experience and being able to coach more clients and people outside. I've all started working on my website, designing it so to create the brand that I'm looking for. And all in all, while there are definitely a lot more things I could have done, I think celebrating the little wins is very important and at least I took one step closer to reaching my goal than a year ago. And now we come to the second step, which is goal setting. And for the year 2021, I'm looking to make $50,000 online doing a variety of different services the main ones coming up for me are doing online coaching and uh, earning income through affiliate income. Now the next step is to reverse engineer how exactly I'm going to make this $50,000 online and breaking it down by quarter, how much you plan on making per quarter and then breaking it down by month and then by week to determine what exactly I need to do in order to get to that goal. So for quarter one, I plan on making $5,000. For quarter two, $10,000, quarter three, 15,000, and for quarter four, 20,000, knowing that in the beginning, I don't, I'm not gonna have a lot of traction, but as I continue to do what I need to do in order to reach those goals, that hopefully my more traffic volume, more clientele, and just uh, momentum will help me get to my goal. Now, I'm at the start of my online business journey, and no one really knows who I am, so for the purposes of quarter one and quarter two, I'm really just trying to establish a following, establish who I am, what I can provide to potential clients. And I plan on doing that by releasing one YouTube video a week in the first quarter for the first three months, uh, January, February, March. Second quarter, up that to two videos a week. In addition to that, I plan on doing the same thing on Instagram because I know that a lot of my potential clients are, are, are more on Instagram, so and there's much more direct engagement with that platform, so I plan on making same schedule, one post a week on Instagram, up to upping it to two, and slowly increasing my bandwidth on both as the year goes on. Now I talked about how in quarter one I wanted to make $5,000 a month through my online business, and it's good to know how exactly you plan on getting to that number. For me, uh, my avenues right now are affiliate income and online coaching, and off the ballpark, I believe, I'm believe i guessing that I will probably make 80% of that number from online coaching, meaning that of that $5,000, $4,000 is going to be through online coaching. Now, it's very important to know how much you plan on charging your clients or your services because that gives you a rough amount of how many clients and or packages you need to sell in order to reach that number. So, for example, for me to reach $4,000 a month, and for me to charge $200 a month to a client, I will need to get 20 clients a month in order to reach this number. As time goes on, that number will have to actually obviously increase and grow in order to reach the monthly goals that I set for myself. And that's just one example of reverse engineering how exactly you need to get to your financial goals. Now for me, while the number is nice, it is actually the end all be all for me because I believe that for you to make money, basically, it's a it's kind of a reflection of how much you've been able to help people and how many people you've been able to help. If I don't reach my goal, that's okay because at the same time, that's, that's more a reflection that I need to refine what exactly I am doing, what exactly I am providing to my clients in order to 
better understand them and being able to provide a better product to them. Now I basically gave you guys one financial goal of mine. So you know, leave a comment below and tell me what one of your financial goals are for this upcoming year. The second area I really wanted to make gains on is in the personal fitness area for myself. Meaning, I like to train, I like to move around, and I just like to exercise and just be in shape and be able to do things. And that's just always been my general goal. But for this upcoming year, I'm, I wanted to set some more specific goals. Just talking about my 2020 and what exactly I've done in this arena. A lot has changed in 2020, obviously. we I typically am on a Dragon Boat team, I still am. But there's there would have been a lot more on-water training. We have, would have been doing a lot of uh, erging, and that didn't really happen this year. Instead, I looked at it more as taking a recovery year, taking a time off, taking some time away from the sport, while still being active, and just being able to move around and do things I previously did not have time to do. And as a side benefit, I did lose a couple pounds off of my body just because I wasn't eating as much, I wasn't working out as much. But all in all, my personal health and personal training and personal fitness didn't really suffer too much. I stayed in relatively good health, I didn't catch COVID. Now for 2021, I've wanted to set many more concrete goals and more specifically performance goals, things that I want, I've always been wanting to achieve in body weight calisthenics that I set for this year that I am looking to make a lot of headway on. Now I'm basing a lot of the goals I want to reach this year off of a chart that another YouTuber, uh, Tom Merrick or the Bodyweight Warrior set for an intermediate bodyweight calisthenics athlete. His channel is amazing. If there's something you want to learn about bodyweight fitness, you should definitely go check him out. So there are a lot of things I want to achieve this year, specifically a one arm chin up negative, a 40 second freestanding handstand, a press to handstand, a 10 second planche, a five second straddle front lever, five second full back lever, and a 20 second L sit. Now you may be thinking that's a lot of goals that I want to achieve. While these are all performance goals, what comes from the performance is laying down a good foundation and building up my strength, building up the movements that will enable me to reach these goals and just consistently sticking to a program, training appropriately and progressively overloading to get to that goal and always just being mindful of what exactly my body can do. I'm a big believer in what Tom Merrick provides and you know, I subscribe to his uh, tribe program. My plan to, in order to reach these goals is to follow his skills strength training program, which is basically training three to four times a week doing roughly 45 to 50 minute sessions each time. His skills and strength program is roughly 26 weeks. My downfall has always been consistency, so I set myself up to just follow a program, do what I need to do in order to reach my goals. On top of that, I, need to, I plan on doing a lot more handstand sessions. Handstand is more of a skill than it is a strength exercise, and for me, just putting in the time in to do that. And the same thing, I'm gonna be following his handstand routines, doing it three to four times a week, roughly 30 to 45 minutes for 32 weeks. So it's always a good idea to know how long certain things will take because you will then have a realistic expectation of what it is you can achieve within that time frame. My overall goal is to actually be being able to go through his programs and complete them rather than doing one-offs for them and just not being consistent. Again, consistency is key in achieving anything. And so, you know, leave a comment below, like what exactly are some of your fitness goals for 2021? The third area I really wanted to tackle this year is getting into PT school. I've been still taking my online prerequisite classes. Got like a 3.7, 3.8 for the most part as an overall GPA last year. I volunteered at a PT clinic, being able to just shadow a, a PT, being able to help some patients, recover from whatever injuries that they had, and just be able to just live their life. And that was probably one of the most gratifying things I did this year. And I also applied to five different schools in physical therapy, and we'll just have to see where that goes. Now for 2021, there's always a chance that I don't get into physical therapy school based on this cycle. So what am I supposed to do? My goal is to basically strengthen my application even more, I've always had a very lagging cumulative GPA from my undergrad years and you know, this came to bite, bite me in the butt 15 years down the line. And that's okay, you know, it's, it's part of the process. It's just something I know that I have to up my baseline. And what that entails is me taking four additional courses in order to just make me reach the minimum for a lot of these programs. And I would really like to complete all these classes by the time the next PT cycle opens up in July and so that means that I will need to complete four classes within the next six months. Now, I've currently signed up for two classes, both requiring different time commitments. So I, if I want to complete these 
two classes within the next three months, January through March. One of the classes requires about 108, 110 hours based on their syllabus in order to complete. Now, if I break it down into the 13 weeks that are in January through March, that comes up to about eight hours and 15 minutes per week. To break it down even more, that's roughly about 70 minutes a day that I need to devote to this one specific course. The other class I am taking is actually roughly 62 hours of work. And if you break it down, that's about four hours and 45 minutes a week devoted to that class. And so that's roughly 40 minutes a day if you break it down into seven days. What I've done is actually try to schedule it within my calendar as part of my step four in my process so that I know what it is every single day that I need to do. You can do this in Google Calendar. I have something like a planner such as this, a daily planner for myself, I'm blotting out time in the day that I specifically have something that I want to accomplish that day. It's important to do this to do it in an actual calendar and actually devoting time to things because we think we have a lot more time in the day than we do. And what ends up happening is we don't actually accomplish a lot of the tasks we set out to do. And so estimating how much time you need per task, putting it in your calendar, actually delegating that time for that, and doing that task helps you actually focus your time, actually gives you a realistic expectation of what it is you can do in that day. I hope this was a very good example to just show what it is that I plan on doing based on the process that I set up in this last video because a lot of times for me, watching other videos and people telling me what they do, it's very hard to actually visualize and make and take in for myself. I like it a lot better when like people make examples of like everyday day-to-day -day demonstrations because it gives me an idea of how I can do things and like a very realistic way of doing it. And so I hope like me laying out my process for this upcoming year served as a very good template for what it is that you can accomplish this year. Now I also have these two additional videos that you guys can watch just to hopefully open up your mind to help you live your best life. That's really all I have for today.